So unless you've been tuning into news and rumors like our own boot sequence channel, which by the way, you can find a link to that right over here. Um, this launch is probably a bit of a surprise. Well, everyone kind of knew that Nvidia would eventually have lower priced GPUs, just maybe not too soon and right in the middle of massive shortages as well. Either way, here we are with another new graphics card. And this time it's called the RTX 3060 Ti. And it's meant to replace one of the most popular GPUs of all time, the RTX 2060 series. Now, Nvidia is actually doing the right thing by allowing reviews to go live a day before this thing actually goes on sale. So this should actually give you a little bit more time uh, to see if it's the right card for you. With that being said, no launch these days will be complete without talking about the massive disaster we've seen with availability of pretty much every new product. It's not just GPUs. I, uh, I think people are just frustrated and I totally get it. In fact, some put their hopes into AMD's RX 6000 series to fix things and they just didn't help either. And it looks like they screwed up big time than Nvidia did. Now, how is the RTX 3060 Ti launch looking? Well, the team actually reached out to our retail contacts to see if we could get just a rough idea on what the stock situation is gonna look like. Supposedly, some of them are gonna have more cards for this launch than the RTX 3080, the 3090, and the 3070 combined. Others just said no more cards will be available than for the RTX 3070 launch. It just seems like this thing's gonna be all over the place, but from everybody that we've been talking to, um, they just expect to sell out right away. Luckily, restocking this GPU should be more frequent than the other cards, so at least there's that, you know? Either way, that's the situation that we're in right now, so why don't we just get into this review right after a quick message from our sponsor. Mm -hmm. I get all that, but exactly how many are we talking about? Trust me, the ladies will be satisfied, okay? And the gentlemen too? Uh-huh. Well, I think my hardware family is ready for the Mini 2. The Lee & Lee O11 Dynamic Mini, an incredibly optimized enclosure to satisfy your mini cravings with a modular rear section to fit your style of build for cool water cooling or compact ATX systems. The dual chamber design hides the visual troublemakers so you can be a proud mini owner and keep everyone happy inside. Very nice. Check out the Lee & Lee O11 Dynamic Mini down below. All right, so let's start off with the RTX 3060 Ti specs and pricing because those will go hand in hand with how it performs against the RTX 3070. Both cards use the same GA104 core that's manufactured on Samsung's eight nanometer process, but the 3060 Ti gets eight of its SMs disabled. That leads to 4,864 CUDA cores, 152 texture units, and 80 ROPs. Frequencies have also been reduced a bit in order to keep some more separation between it and the RTX 3070. But wait till you see the actual clock speeds that our sample hits. That's an interesting story that you'll just see in a bit. On the memory side, nothing has changed from the 3070 to the 3060 Ti. It still has access to eight gigabytes of GDDR6. There's also a law of diminishing returns here between trimming down the core versus power consumption. Disabling almost 20% ends up leading to a reduction of just 20 watts so for an upper mid-tier card, this thing's a bit more power hungry than previous generations. Now, it should be pretty obvious that the RTX 3060 Ti is a direct replacement for the very successful RTX 2060 series. Since it's been launched at the same $400 price point as the 2060 Super, so that's good news that we aren't seeing a huge jump up in the price point. But don't forget, the original RTX 2060 was launched at $350. But I think the big news here is what Nvidia is claiming about its overall performance. You might remember that the RTX 3070 was supposed to beat the RTX 2080 Ti, and that didn't really happen in every single game. This time though, well, it's a $400 graphics card, and that's supposed to beat the RTX 2080 Super, which was launched for a cool $700. And because of demand these days, it's typically selling for even higher, which is just really, really unfortunate. Now, I think it's important to mention something about price creep too, because that's what we've been seeing since the 2060 was launched. Uh, the GTX 1060 was priced between $200 and $300, depending on the variant. The RTX 2060 was priced at $350, and the RTX 2060 Super uh, was $400. But if you look at something like the Steam Hardware Survey, look at the GTX 1060 and the newer 1660 series. They are some of the most popular cards ever produced, and they're still being rocked in a ton of gaming systems. But don't let the 60 series name fool you because the newer TI isn't a replacement for those since it costs a whole lot more, and it's more of an upgrade path for GTX 1070 users. Now, I'm sure Nvidia will be launching something in the $300 price range, so you should definitely wait for that instead of just jumping onto a GPU that's just 
so much more expensive. So just don't feed the hype train, guys. From a physical aspect, this card looks a lot like the RTX 3070 Founders Edition. It's double slot, 9.5 inches long, and has the same mid-mounted custom 12 pin that you'll need an adapter for. Overall, I absolutely love the look, and it's also borrowing the same flow through heatsink design from higher end NVIDIA GPUs. The only difference with this one is instead of a gunmetal gray design running around the perimeter, it's silver. And definitely expect to see tons of different board partner designs, most of which will absolutely be oversized because you know, the bigger the card, the better, right? Now compared to the RTX 2060 and the RTX 2060 Super, you can see how NVIDIA's evolved their look. It's gone from mirrors and flashy looks on the previous design to something a lot more stealth looking, and I really love it. Now, I've complained a lot about the power connector position on the RTX 3000 series, but it's actually a lot better than the rear mounted one on the RTX 2060, which added to the card's overall length, and it meant it couldn't be used in more compact, small form factor cases. This heatsink design does a really good job on the hotter running RTX 3070, and it works super well here too. The interesting thing here is clock speeds are well above the boost specs, but that's pretty much something that we expected for the course with NVIDIA GPUs. But while the 3060 Ti is supposed to run slower than the 3070, they're actually above the 1875 megahertz mark, which we typically saw on the RTX 3070 Founders Edition. Most of the time, it operated at 1915 megahertz, but there were some short intervals where it ran at almost 1950 megahertz. This could actually bring it a bit closer to the 3070 than Nvidia intended. The card is also super quiet, and like all of the latest GPUs, the fans completely turned themselves off during idle or low load periods. There's no coil whine or anything either, so that's nice. Now, when it comes to power consumption, this is probably the most important part for anyone looking to upgrade their system from an older GPU, and yes, the RTX 3060 Ti does take quite a bit more than the RTX 2060 Super it's supposed to replace. As a matter of fact, the numbers make it look a lot more like the RTX 2070 Super, and that's definitely something to take into account. I'd recommend a good 550 to 600 watt power supply for this thing. Now let's see how that power is spread out. And it looks like there's quite a few instances where the 3060 Ti hits close to the peaks we saw in the last graph. It also spends more time in its upper power range than the RTX 2060 Super. As for the test system before we get into the benchmarks, nothing really has changed from the RX 6800 review, but we are adding a bunch of other GPUs so everyone can get a better idea about where the RTX 3060 Ti lands right now. At 1080p, this card's performance is right in line with what Nvidia said it would be. It cleanly beats the RTX 2080 Super in situations that aren't CPU limited, and in all of our results, it's behind in just one. Against the RTX 2060 Super, well, it isn't even close, guys, with the 3060 Ti usually hitting between 25% and 45% higher frame rates. I mean, sure, there are some games that are bottlenecked even by the Ryzen 9 5900X we're using, but overall, this is pretty impressive. On average, the 3060 Ti is a winner against the RTX 2080 Super, but what impressed all of us the most was how close it is to the RTX 3070. Remember, that's a hundred bucks separating these two cards but only about 10% average frame times. And also keep in mind that with a lower end processor, this would even be closer. While paying $400 for a GPU is still a lot, there's no denying that Nvidia has a winner on their hands from an overall value perspective. The crazy thing here is that because of demand, all older cards in this chart are still on sale for their original launch prices or even higher in many cases. So this chart is a pretty accurate snapshot of the situation right now. Moving on to 1440p and the results are pretty much the same, but the RTX 3060 Ti is able to extend its lead by a bit versus the RTX 2060. Against the RTX 2080 Super, well, that race tightens up here with the Ti still staying ahead most of the time, but with what we know about 1080p performance already, there's really no crazy surprises here, guys. Now, the overall performance chart reads a lot like the 1080p one did, but with a few minor exceptions. First of all, the RTX 3070 jumps out a bit further ahead since a lot of its CPU bottlenecks have been eliminated by moving to a higher resolution. It's also pretty obvious that Nvidia has accomplished a massive leap forward over the RTX 2060 Super, a GPU that was released about 14 months ago. 
And even though the RTX 3070 provides higher frame rates, the dollar per FPS value for the RTX 3060 Ti is still leading everything else. This is actually one of the best ratios we've seen, and it makes me really, really excited to see what's been planned by both NVIDIA and AMD for the $300 price bracket. The other thing I wanna quickly mention is these value charts are based on current prices and not the jacked up ones that scalpers and retailers will probably charge for the RTX 3060 Ti. Not only that, but board partner cards rarely hit the same price as reference designs, so uh, they would lower their value even more despite the slightly higher clock speeds of the OC models. Now, as a last top for this review, I wanted to touch on ray tracing performance. Here, the RTX 2060 Super just falls apart, while the 3060 Ti is still able to consistently stay above 10% faster than the RTX 2080 Super. A lot of this strength is due to the improvements Nvidia made in their new generation RT cores. So at least in this situation, you get, well, mostly playable frame rates with ray tracing enabled, especially at 1080p. And yes, don't worry, we'll be covering DLSS performance very soon. So I guess I'm just gonna end this video by saying that Nvidia nailed it with the RTX 3060 Ti. It almost hits RTX 3070 performance levels at much lower price. And that's good news for gamers who are on a tighter budget. But don't kid yourself, this isn't an inexpensive GPU by any stretch of the imagination. But I also feel the same frustration as you guys do because this is a great card and chances are it will be in super short supply until 2021. Now, would I line up to buy one of these GPUs? Probably not. Would I add myself to a waiting list? No, but, but if you can find one for $400 and if you're looking for a GPU it, within this price range, this thing, is a slam dunk. It's just absolutely an amazing card for the price. So on that note, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Let us know what you guys think about the RTX 3060 Ti from Nvidia. Stay safe and spend responsibly. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one.